been given an account of an experience. Because now, let's look at this narrative, the adjective, narrative uh, qualifying the now essay, talking about giving an account of past event. Though we have some books that uh, say that we have present narration, uh, also future narration, like the present narration, like talking about the activities that you do on a specific day or uh, in a month or any time. But in this case, since we're looking at what's in the word structure, because normally you have a question like this, you ask you, write uh, a story that ends with this expression. Yes, you might ask you, write a story that ends with this expression. An expression like this, you say, uh, let's say, the day I will never forget. The day I will never forget. You have such a question like this, let's say, um, write a story um, that ends that ends uh, with the expression the expression you have say the day the day the day I will uh, never Forget, have, uh, forget. Now, this is the type of question that you will see at once. When you want to write this type of essay, this type of narrative essay, look at um, the features. So we are coming to learn the features that are involved in writing this type of essay. Now, let's look at the features. The features. Whenever you have this type of question, the first thing that you have to do is you need to write the title. To say it requires for the title. And I'm advising you to be taking jottings, taking jottings. Um, because I, I'm not going to give, for example, like any sort of special note of this, because these are the ones you follow the jottings, and when you have the jottings. I'm sure that you concentrate to pass. Now, the title, we say the title. Now, in the case of the title, some authorities say that uh, you may give it any title when you're writing a story, you may, you may give it any title. That's what some authorities say. Um, others say that if you have some question, that your title, you know, should be got from what? From the question given to you. That is, this that is given to you the day I will never forget that that is, that that is what is to be what is uh, your title. Now, if you are writing this title, so let me just indicate it here and say, uh, let's say it got from the question. We say got from the question. Got from the question. Now, when you are writing this, this title, if you are writing this title, there are two ways of writing the title of any narrative essay. You may choose to write your title in block letters. Now, in block letters, let's use this one uh, as an example. Uh, block letters. When I say block letters, that is, each individual word should be written in a capital letter. That's what I mean, block letters. Now, we write in, we have uh, D, capital T, capital H, capital E. The day, the day I uh, will never, we have uh, forget. Please put a full stop here. Yes. Now, this is the first, uh, what is the form? You may use to write a title. Everything written in the capital letters. Now, normally, uh, many books, many teachers, uh, people will say that when you write in block letters, you're not on the line. But it's not what it's not what it's not what it says. I have what it says, a fast rule that you're not on the line when you write in block letters. But at this level, since you're about, uh, uh, you'll be taking the words, I advise when you write in block letters, don't on the line. But if you write in block letters, it won't go on the line. Yes, in fact, 
All titles of essays, whether written in block letters or small letters, they are on the line. But for the last structure, for the last structure, I advise you when you write in block letters, don't underline. But that is a common, what is a uh, idea, you know. So this is a, this is a, this is the first way to write a title. The second one is to what is it to, to write your title in small letters. In this case, um, we have some exceptions. Now, in the case of the terminals, because the terminals we have uh, A, R, and D. When they start the title, you have to write them in block letters. And um, what I mean is the first word you have to write it in block letters. The first, the head word, the first word you have to write it in block letters. But if the occur in the middle of the title, it takes a small letter. You've chosen to, to use a small letter form. But uh, the head of nouns, uh, pronoun, the first word of the pronoun, verbs, adverbs, adjectives, you have to capitalize the first words. It's more, uh, this is second form or uh, use this, we say D, now you have capital T. This one's not D, D, of course, D, D as a noun. Is that not so? Okay, you yeah. have that D. Small day, I of course, first person personal pronoun, you have I. And will, you have that the verbs, and also the verb. You have capital W, small i, L, L, will, and never, of course, visit never, capital N, small e, B, E, R, never, forget again, capital N is a verb. Then, so if you write in this form, of course, the number one you say you underline, is that not so? Yes, if you write in this form. But to be using of the forms. But for me, what I advise my students to always do is that, please, always write your titles in blog letters. That is good, because, you know, no one is perfect. Uh, if you choose to write a small letter, for example, you, uh, you want to use the second form. You, you, might, you might have written this, this, this. Then mistakenly, you write this. You write never in small letters. So as far as you do this, what the examiner will do, we have to start with this. So you suffer. So what I advise, it is good to write, or uh, to be writing all your titles, all your essay titles. Letters, or any other one. Be writing all your titles in block letters. I think that would be good for you. So this is the first step that you have to um, take whenever you are writing, you want to write a story. Okay, okay, I'll try to increase the characters. Now, we're looking at the second step. Now, when you're writing a story, it's not like in the case of uh, letters, where you have to, you need to have a special introduction, like in the case of, uh, what is it, informal, you grade, semi informal also you grade, but formal you don't grade, and then you introduce the purpose of your letter. These are the case of story writing. For story, uh, what I advise my students to do always is that as soon as you've uh, written your title, please start to narrate your story. Don't waste time. You know, don't forget that at examination, we are time bound. Start to narrate your story. Now, when you start to narrate your story, you know, you have to take two things into consideration. Um, they fall under what they say, the, the, the broad head, what they say, the narrative technique. You have to decide on the narrative technique. The narrative technique. The narrative technique. Now, the narrative technique, you have the first person, the first person, and we have the third person. Okay, let's leave this uh, this struggle in many cases the font. Uh, the first person 
I hope you can see my characters clearly now. Policy, first policy, and you want to see the third policy. Third policy. Now, for the first policy, that is technique, it is always I. And for the third policy, there is you have he or she or you have it. Now, you have to decide on the narrative technique. You either use this first person or the third person. Um, I know you are interested in knowing how to use a first person and how to use a third person. When you use a first person, that means you are about to say directly involved in the storytelling. That is, you are about to say the main narrator. You are what they say involved, what they say in the incident, in the story that you want to, what they say tell. I, so you have to use I. But in the case of the third person, you are what they say narrating a story about people. Yes, about someone, the main character. That's what you have to use he, she, it. And in this case, instead of just starting with he, you may start with the name of a person. That shows that you started with the third person. In the case of she, of course, the name of uh, female. Of, for it now, because they say you are using a body, say, an animal as your main character, and giving that animal a name. Now, situation where you are going to use the first person. I would say, uh, four years ago, uh, I was in Kenima, right? Good. That means you started this one, I. You are what you say you are part of you are what you say you are in the story, you are directly involved in the story. I but if you are using he, she eats, say four years ago, uh, John was in Kenima, or Yebu was in Kenima, right? So that means you've used John and Yebu, what is say the third person narrative technique. So you have to decide on this very spot. You have to decide here the narrative technique that you have to use. After you've decided on the narrative technique now, the next step, um, the, what you say, the, 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 when you are writing the story in the first paragraph, three things that are very important you need to mention, you need to state in your story writing. One, the setting where the story took place, the setting, the setting, the time, and uh, the main character. Of course, in the case of the main character, could be the first person or the third person for the main character. Now, when I say setting, of course, I've said the place where the story took place at a time when the story took place. Now, just have this, uh, this as an example. We say, uh, uh, say, 10 years ago, there was a man called, what do you say, Ali, who lived in the village of, uh, what do you say, uh, uh, let's say, Pujel, right? So you see, now you've got what? Once before a time, or 10 years ago, that is the time, is that not so? There was a man, what is he called Ali, that is the main character, the third person. And uh, we say Pujel, in the village of Pujel, that is the place, the setting. So, your introduction, that is how you have to start your story. You have to start off by stating the place, that is the setting, the time and the main character of your writer, that's of your story. That's what you have to do. After you've done that, I hope you are taking the jottings because we don't have enough space here to write, continue. Um, so we, now the other point that you have to take into consideration, consideration is uh, the tense. In fact, the tense, in fact, this has been a major problem 
for many students because many of them cannot control the text. Most of them don't know the exact what they say or the actual text to use when writing a story. You see? So that is why most students, what they say, avoid narrative verses. For things, the things that you have to use is the past, of course, narration. The past. That's the past tense. You have to use the past tense. For example, you say, I went, of course, I know all of you at this, at this level, at the senior school, you should know the past tense. You cannot tell me you don't know the past tense. Because I went, he was, I was, they are where, etc. So, the past. For the past, the past has what is the aspects. Aspects. And you should know how to use these aspects. Like, the past, we have the simple past. The simple past, of course, uh, my other colleague that will be coming in, I'm very sure that we'll be looking at the uh, grammar area so you know more about this text. So like the text, the past, we have the simple past. Of course, we have the use of the simple past. And the simple past in story writing is normally the dominant aspect of the past tense. That is the one that is, uh, the, the aspect that is commonly used. I say, went, was, we are, we are the B E R E. That is what I mean. Not where, I'm talking about place. So, simple past, yeah, past continuous, past continuous, right? You have past perfect, past perfect. I have past perfect, uh, perfect continuous. Now, let me just uh, run through the uses. Yes, let me just give one uh, use of each. Now, the simple past, of course, that is used to talk about an action that started in the past and was completed. Now, for example, you say, I went to school. Yesterday, I went to school yesterday. Wednesday is the past. And the past continuous, of course, you have the structure was or we are plus ing. Talking about an action that was going on in the past and then that action was interrupted by another action. For example, you say, I was teaching when my phone ran. Have you seen the, the, the use that have past perfect, two actions occurred in the past, but one of the actions happened to occur before the other. For example, we say, I had eaten my food before my brother arrived. So you see, of course, for the past perfect continuous, an action that had been going on in the past, when, uh, before the other action occurred, I think, there is something. Okay, so, before the other action occurred, so the past perfect continuous. So you see, but we are not looking at these uh, tenses that we are using grammar, we're looking at this S. Now, so the dominant tense is the past tense. So your story, you know, the tense that you have to use in your story is the past tense. So of course, I told you as uh, the past, they have the various aspects. And now, sometimes you may use a present tense in your story, but in this situation, it is when you introduce what is a dialogue. Of course, you know what is the meaning of dialogue now. Dialogue, a conversation between two people. What do you say two or more people? Fine. And when you want to use the dialogue, that's the next thing we're looking at. You have to put what you say, the speeches of the characters in quotation marks. Now, so after so the tense, after the tense, you say, make the characters speak as a dialogue. The dialogue. Make them speak. That makes your story lively. Let them talk. And when you're introducing a dialogue, your the speeches of your characters, what they say, should be in quotation marks. For example, you say now you are narrating a story. Let's say uh, the story is about 
John and Mary, right? Okay. Now in the story, John see, John shouted, Mary, where are you going? Mary, where are you going? So you see, yeah. So in this case, this is a conversation. Now John is saying, John uh, now shouted, shouted, quotation marks. That continues here. Say, uh, Mary, you say, where, where, where are uh, Now, I is present. Where are you? Are you born? Now, petition, what is it? Close it. So, you see, so the speeches of your characters should be, what is it? Should be enclosed, what is it? In quotation marks. So, you see, and then you have to use the what is it the present tense. So there comes in the present tense when you are writing your story. That is the dialogue of the conversation. And then if Mary is responding, the same response should be written in the present tense. Mary could say, I'm going to see my mom. I'm going to see my mom. Of course, am that is I am A M R is the present tense. I'm not so. So I'm going to see my mom. So you see, so you introduce dialogue in your what is it in your story. After the dialogue, the next thing that you have to take into consideration uh, is you have conflicts. Introduce conflicts in your story. Conflict, and that conflict makes your story dramatic conflict conflicts introducing conflicts in your narration in your storytelling story writing uh it shows what is it maturity that you know what you are doing conflict now conflicts we have two types of conflicts we have external and internal conflicts now, for external conflicts, there is a struggle between two opposing forces. Normally, it's very easy to introduce external conflicts. Now, now you are writing, you are uh, narrating a story about John and Mary. You want to introduce a conflict. You can introduce a conflict wherein Mary to John's money without telling him. So when he came and he never saw the money, when Mary returned, then see a conflict erupted. They both say, quarry. See, so you took my money, this. Let's say uh, the quarry, what is the error of what is the impact? You see? So that's the right external conflict. There are many ways of what is it, um, bringing over the external conflicts in your story writing. In the case of internal conflicts, it is a situation where in the character, especially the main character, uh, is in a state of confusion. The character is confused. For example, let's say uh, uh, a character is, uh, is, is a schoolboy, let's say John, using John as a main character. John was given his school fees. So as coming uh, uh, a thief, you know, what is it, stole the money from him and he never knew. So when he came to school and he later realized that the money had been stolen, you know, from him. So now it's not in the state of confusion that what would he tell his parents when, what is it, they got home. So you see, so as a child now, even, even when it, uh, it was time for him to eat, to not eat what he's saying, that happy mood. So it has what is that internal complex, also internal complex. So you see, so it depends on you, the writer, whether how to introduce what, whether you want to be external complex, internal complex. Because most of the stories that I've read over the years, most of the stories of most writers uh, that want to introduce external complex. But some of them also skillful writer. Very great writers in usual say internal conflict. So it just it depends on you. So introduce conflict to make your story dramatic. Now, the next thing you have to take 
when writing also your story. Now, your, your paragraph. In the case of the, your, your paragraph, normally we every paragraph, every write paragraph, paragraph. You start for the with an episode. Normally, like when writing this type of story, we advise at least half six paragraphs, six paragraphs, six paragraphs, or sometimes we may have five. We don't write below five, we don't have what is it, below five, five, six, seven, almost. Good. So, paragraph it. So, you take paragraph it into consideration. And then, You also have to say, um, concluding, concluding your story, concluding your story. Now, concluding your story. Now, normally you have this type of question, say, write a story that ends with the expression, I will never forget. So after you've narrated now, you want to conclude your story, you have to conclude your story with this expression given to you. You have to fashion it in a way that what is it? It's this, what is it? Question given to that. You have to, for example, let's just say, uh, you explain John, this is later, he said, I will never forget that day. Or um, say, John later said that he will never forget that you never uh, forget that day. So you end your story with the expression. Yes. And then now the last point, no, this one is not compulsory. Uh, if you want, you may write your name. You may write your name. This is not compulsory. But if you want, you write your name, your full name, precisely. So do that. So this is all about writing what is say uh, a narrative essay. I'm pretty sure that you know you've learned something from narrative essay. Yeah, so this of course you've seen. So in summary, we have what is say features, write a title, write a lot of the question precisely. Of course, it's demonstration, either blog form or in small letter form. They have what is say. Narrative technique, you decide whether you use the first person or the third person. After that, now we start to narrate a story. That is, when I see a story, you have to take into consideration the setting, the time, and the main character. Use the tense, you have the dialogue, you use the dialogue, complete, paragraphing, then you conclude your story. So that is all. So now I'm going to give you an assignment. So the assignment is uh, quickly. Write a story that ends uh, with the expression uh, had I known had I known had I known I would have stayed I would have stayed Okay, so all the best to stop here for today, then we'll meet any other time. Thank you.